What are the issues that the free press has taken on? For example, the issue of net neutrality. Yeah. Where is it now? Are the corporations, the cable companies, the telecoms writing the legislation that would privatize the Internet? They are. They're, right now, the phone and cable companies are putting a full court press on in Washington uh, to try to get net neutrality eliminated as a policy, meaning that they would be able to privatize the Internet, in effect, and determine which web service, which websites, which services come through and which don't. And they would be like the cable companies. You'd have to pay them off to get through, and they could even prohibit you from going through if they wanted to. And <clears throat> it is a central fight right now. It, the future of the Internet hangs in the balance, and free press is leading the fight. They're fighting at the FCC. They're fighting in the court system. Uh, they're basically fighting behind closed doors. They're not doing it at Congress yet, but we have to be at the ready. And I, again, in this struggle compared to journalism, with what free press is doing, we're fighting the biggest lobbies in Washington just about. And these are companies, AT&T and Comcast, that are not free market companies. They're created by government monopoly licenses. They're not very good at what they do. Consumers hate them, but what they're great at doing is buying off politicians. That's their specialty. That's their, that's their added advantage over everyone else. Uh, the journalism fight's a little different, though, that Free Press is engaged in, because there the corporations are heading out the door. They're saying, see you later. We had a nice run for 100 years. We cashed in our chips. Now we're moving on to something else. Here there's this massive void we're trying to fill, and I think it's a p different political fight for that reason, and it gives us hope that we can have more success. So the sort of stuff we're talking about uh, it will increase journalism. And actually, if you look at your European countries, those countries that have instituted the most journalism subsidies for independent community and public media, for alternative newspapers, the private media prosper too, the private mm -hmm. journalism, because there's a real community of journalism, and that's sort of the tide raises all the boats. So there, I think the political fight um, is we're farther away from people envisioning that we have the power in us to change it, mm -hmm. but we don't have the same direct corporate opposition that, that we face in net neutrality, where truly we're fighting uh, giants that are determined to destroy us. Well, but one of the interesting things, though, about this net neutrality fight, What's different uh, is that they've not only uh, the telecoms and uh, have not only bought off the politicians; they are increasingly <clears throat> neutralizing uh, and winning over major civil rights organizations. So that in the past, civ where civil rights movement was part of the movement to democratize the media, what's happening now, unfortunately, is whether it's the National Council of La Raza or uh, or several of these other civil rights groups, they're lining up now with the telecoms on this issue. And making it a lot more difficult to build a a, a, a more solid mass movement around well, that. Well, Juan, these are the struggles we always have. And, and again, these are, Joel Rogers has this, this phrase, uh, uh, an offhand phrase, but one that describes it, you know, hungry people fighting over food don't demand what they need, right? And so we have many groups that have limited resources, especially in this bad economic time. And so the telecoms and others are looking around for anybody that they can, they can influence. But I want to defend a lot of folks in the civil rights community. Congresswoman Donna Edwards, uh, a person who comes from uh, civil rights and activism, uh, has been just incredibly outspoken on these issues and has fought hard. Uh, it, members of the Congressional Latino Caucus or Hispanic Caucus and Black Caucus, we have we have many allies. Not as many as we want. We're fighting, but but I honestly believe that that that's that's not the core challenge. It's a part of it. It's one we have to be concerned about. We got to do a lot of movement building, but the core challenge is when policy is made behind closed doors, when we don't have the light of day on it. And that's what the telecoms are trying to do. They're trying to come in at a moment when we have so many other issues we're worrying about, uh, wars and a bad economy and all that, and move behind the scenes. Our great struggle is to push this into the open. And we have, amazingly enough, and, and I, I've been very critical of President Obama on a lot of issues, but uh, just the other day, he said in a YouTube interview uh, that he's passionately in favor of net neutrality, that is absolutely essential, didn't back off a bit. And that's important because everybody's looking for the, the bit, tiniest opening, the bad guys looking for the tiniest opening. The president sent a good signal there. What about Comcast takeover of NBC? would be horrible. It's exactly the wrong direction to go. You know, I think this gets back to the journalism issue again, because, you know, it's funny. People say, well, if you subsidize independent, nonprofit, non commercial media, you're letting the government get its hands in the way. Well, if you do nothing, what we're going, evolving to very rapidly in this country is sort of a nexus of corporate power and government power, where corporations are driving it, much like the Gilded Age, but, mm -hmm. you know,
know, on steroids. Mm -hmm. uh, that should frighten anyone who's genuinely concerned about government power. And when you allow, the government allows these companies like Comcast and NBC, both of which were built on government monopoly licenses. These are not free market companies. They're built on government monopoly licenses to merge so that the, the same company that dominates internet service provision also is producing the content that goes over those wires. So it has a stake in basically setting up a private like network. Like Cablevision and Newsday here in New York. Yeah, it, and in communities across this country. Everywhere. Yeah. And wiping out any alternative voices. It, it is exactly the darkest Orwellian future. It's why the journalism fight now is so important, because it has to be the counterbalance to this combined corporate government power. We have to leave it there. I want to thank you both for being with us. Robert McChesney and John Nichols, their new book, The Death and Life of American Journalism. That does it for the show. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Shofa the producer, Armata Angel, Steve Martinez, I'm Amy Goodman, Juan Gonzalez. Thanks for joining us.